My name is Johannes. I'm an architect by training. Today, I will walk you around Songkla just to introduce some aspect of this very interesting town in southern Thailand. So this is uh, Songkla Lake. The immigrants from southern China came from the north directions, from South China Sea. And then they landed here and entered the city from these directions. In Southeast Asia, we believe that the demons occupy the water, the gods dwell on the mountain, and human community live in between these two, on the slope of the mountain. But in this case, because Songkla is unique, that we don't have mountain at, at, the, at the east side of the town, but South China Sea, then they created artificial mountain or symbolic mountain. And this symbolic mountain are the temples. This is one of the most important axes in Songkla. The original gate used to be at the end of this street, uh, facing the water, and considered as the entrance to the city. And at the end of this axis, we have a Kuan Kong temple. This is the Tuape Kong temple, and considered as the god of the land. You see the Chinese character over there? There is a center, like Chung, and the second character is Fu, is happiness. It's located at the center of the settlement and to ensure happiness of the entire community. See the god with the, an old man carrying money and a stem of flower. And this is uh, something related to the symbolic symbolism of wealth and also symbolism of, of growth. At the same time, also the old man um, is also a symbol of permanence, a symbol of uh, longevity and good health. So all this component is very important for the community. Another feature which is also interesting, in, in, especially in Southeast Asia or in Thailand, is the shrine for the spirit, which is also representing the guardian of the house and is located at the entrance. So entrance is considered as a very important transition between the profane and the sacred, between the public and the private. So it's representations of the threshold. So this is not just a door, but this is a threshold. Now we have this cross street along the axis. And this cross street is to connect north and south to connect uh, different communities from the street communities into the enclaves communities, to connect different racial groups and religious groups, and forming a kind of interweaving pattern within the city. Along this street, the main street, uh, to connect the temple and the water, you see a lot of housing typology which is called shop houses. So typically, the ground floor is used for shops and upper floor is for dwelling. But this is very important because this is representations of the marketplace. It's not just a house, but it's also the market, central market of the city. It's not inside a building, but it's on the street. And this street leads into the most important street here at the junctions. And this junction was guarded by the Kuan Kong Temple. This is Quan Kong, or Quan Di, a famous general in the ancient China, which become a god, or considered as a god. This god is especially very, very prominent in terms of uh, a god that may be able to, con to, to connect a different community together. So the temple for Quan Kong is typically located at the city center and very close to the marketplace. And the second uh, morphological consideration for the temple is always located at the junctions. And these T junctions is a connection between two very important economic nodes of the city. One is the street market and the second is the harbour. So that is the main temple for Kuan Kong. And Kuan Kong is represented in three forms. The first one is Kuang Kong holding a sword, which is the symbol of power 
or political power or military power. The second is Kwan Kung holding money or gold and it's a symbol of trade and economic prosperity. And the third Kwan Kung is holding book with the symbols of academia or intellectuals. In Songkla it's very special because Kwan Kung in Songkla is holding a book. This is representing the desire of the community to become an educated, intellectual, cultured community. Almost in uh, all Chinese temples, we will find these uh, lions or mythical lions which guard the entrance or the threshold. This one is a male. The mouth is open and is holding a ball. The other lion, this is woman with a baby. So this is a very ancient symbol of life and death. This temple is so-called the city temple or city pillar temple. There is a pillar located in front of the main altar. And one of the most important gods of this temple is actually is Matsu or the Empress of Heaven is gods popular among the sailors and the Chinese immigrants who came by boat. So normally if the immigrants from southern China decided to stay in a certain locations in Southeast Asia, the first thing to do is to dismantle the boat and then set up a special temple for Matsu. And this temple is facing north because north is the mainland directions when the ancestor came, but also the entry into the Songkla Lake. So that's why it explained the orientation of this temple is not looking into the water towards the west, but it's towards the north. The god at the center is the emperor god. So this is, in popular term, is called the city god. And the other gods on the left, either is a mixture of Buddhist god, but also if you look into the characters over there, it's also a symbol of naval god. Of God it is related to the oceans and the sea. This is the market street, commercial street, where most of the shop and restaurant and cafes are located here. So perpendicular to this main road, you have a several street from east to west towards the lake. This small alley which connects the main market street towards the river, uh, towards the, the waterfront is not considered as a back lane. This is also an access, a public access, that you can see any activities going on, plants very nicely decorated, because the back entrance is the most private entrance for the family. And within these enclaves, you can see people live in the pockets in the smaller buildings. In the shop house typology, this is load-bearing wall, not just simply uh, enclosure wall. So all the structural load was carried from the upper floors to the foundations through this wall. It's very different with the system developed in China, because in China, the house is based on frame structure, and the wall is just an enclosure. It's not structural wall. So in China's uh, original typology, when you remove the wall, the building still stands. But here it's not, because the wall is actually the load-bearing structure. When you remove the wall, everything will collapse. And this typology came together with the Europeans, first by the Portuguese, and then the Dutch, and the British. And this European structural system is adopted into a vernacular local architecture. And the result is a combination, a new hybrid of building typology, which is considered as the most resilient typology, so-called townhouse or shophouse. You look into the roof tiles. This is a hybrid of Chinese and local tiles. It's rounded, and the way they put the roof together is by superimposing.
Why they come to this lake which is not on the beach on the other side of this island? Maybe because this is already uh, a safe haven. There's a lot of Malay community, fishermen communities stays here before the Chinese immigrants came to this place. And also give a protection from typhoon. It is really safe. You don't have a big waves coming from that direction, from the ocean directions. There is no strong wind directly coming from the open oceans. But you have a very peaceful lagoon or lake. It's not actually a lake, but it's a lagoon because it's directly connected to the sea. It gives a natural protection so you can park your boat safely, you can land safely, and you can board the boat safely. This is the former city wall of Songkla. Before they built the wall, this is an open settlement of fishermen settlements and immigrant settlements. When the community getting stronger and richer, they need protections. So they built this wall and the gates on different sides. 